What's good YouTube, it's Castle Scope. We're back on another video today. In today's video, you're gonna be learning how to make your own Saber Glow edits in Adobe After Effects. Now, the reason you see me in Photoshop at the beginning is because this is a vital part of the design. So a lot of times in After Effects, when you're trying to make your own Saber Glow edits, it's hard to, it's hard for Saber to notice the data that's inside of the points because sometimes the outlines are a lot are just really too thick for the data to recognize that there's like this red part in here and then this white eye and the beak there's things like that so what you're going to want to do at first is you're going to want to just use your magic magic wand tool and you're just going to want to make a separate layer mask of you're going to want to make a separate layer mask of what's inside the outline okay so what's inside the outline you want to make a separate layer mask and as you see i already have it right here so i'm not going to do it again but you just mark your points with the adding the combining shapes on and you would just hit the layer mask tool right here in the bottom right all right so that's what you're going to want to do if the, for the first thing and then once that's done i'm going to apply this mask again once that's done you want to save each separately okay so i already have them saved but you're going to want to save each separately so first you're going to want to save just the inside part so you go to file save as and then you're going to save it on your logos you're gonna save it as PNG, of course. Make sure you save it as a PNG. Save your logo for the outside and then save your original one, okay? So I already have that done, so I'm just gonna get onto After Effects and I'll see you guys over there. Make sure you guys save. All right, so now we're on Adobe After Effects. If you guys come to this screen and you don't see new composition or new composition from footage, just go to File, New, and then go to a new project. File, New, New Project. But for me, I've used this a lot, so it's already gonna load in for me. So I'm gonna choose the one on the left, just new composition. And I'm just gonna name this classic, I'm just gonna name it classic ATL Saber Reveal. You guys can name it whatever you want. My width is gonna be 1080 and height's gonna be 1350 because that's max Instagram size. If we were going for a YouTube video or something, maybe it would be like 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. But for for these purposes, that's what we're gonna be using, 1080 by 1350. And our frame rate is gonna be 30 pixels, 29.97 is close enough, um, with a little bit of just support, just in case it's not directly 30. And then our duration is gonna be 30. You can um, manipulate that. I'll show you guys as soon as we open it up how you're gonna manipulate that. But let's just hit on OK and get into our composition. So this bar on the this bar that goes along the time this is gonna, it's really gonna have you set your time. So it goes to 30 right now. You could switch it to like six, eight, whatever you want to do. But keep it at the end for right now, just cause you don't need to mess around with it for right now. So we're gonna go to, into file, and we're gonna go to import, and we're gonna import the files that you saved for the ATL logo. So I have my classic ATL logo. I have the inside that I saved. The inside's right there. And then I also have my classic ATL logo fixed because there's a little bit of white on the outside. So I'm gonna import both of those logos into my composition. So just hold down control or you can press shift and then click, but you're gonna load both those in and press import. All right, so now we're gonna take them from the project file and we're gonna put them into the composition. So now these are both in the composition. If you wanna make adjustments to the size, you can just click on both. So holding control, I'm gonna click both and I'm just gonna shift, make sure you hold shift when you resize in After Effects, because if not, it's not gonna be square. So click on the, the bottom uh, bottom left corner in this case. I'm gonna hold down shift, and I'm gonna resize just a little bit, and that's fine with me. All right, so the next step is gonna be to pre-compose. Pre-compose is pretty easy. You're gonna right click. Make sure you don't do pre-compose on both of them at the same time, because that's gonna merge them together. Um, and you don't wanna do that, because um, the, like I said, the data is not going to recognize most of the time the stuff inside if you have a thick outline. So you're going to right click on your first one and you're going to go to pre-compose and we're going to go to move all attributes into the new composition. That's what you're usually going to use. And hold on, I just want to check which one is which. So this one is the outline. Okay, so I'm going to go right click, pre-compose and move all attributes into the new composition for the first one. I'm just gonna press OK. So now that's pre-composed and we're gonna do the same thing on the second one. All right, so now you got both of them pre-composed. So the next step, you're gonna go up to the Layers tab. The Layers tab is right here. You're gonna go to Layer and then Auto Trace. And for Auto Trace, you can either choose Alpha or Luminance. Sometimes you're gonna have to experiment, but Alpha or Luminance is usually the best. It's just which is the best of the two. But 
for the settings, it's usually going to be one tolerance, 10 minimum area, five threshold, 50% corner roundness. So you're gonna click on that and that's gonna get you your first mask of the outline. All right, so that gives you the first mask of the outline. And now we're on our second part, which is the inside. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to layer, auto trace, and it's going to be one, 10, five, 50, like before. And then boom, now we have everything masked out. See this part, it did get inside a little bit, but that's because I tweaked it in Photoshop somewhat, but it didn't get this red part right here. So that's why I said it's pretty important to get your outline masked out and it's going to help you in the long run. Okay. So now at this point you can go into Sabre. So if you don't have Sabre, I'm going to link the Sabre folder so you guys can download that type in Sabre right here. So Sabre is the co-pilot and you're going to clip it onto both. But for right now, I'm just clipping it onto the top layer. So once you have it on the top layer, there's so many presets that you can use. Sometimes I like to use Ghost, because Ghost just looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna use Ghost right here. So set your preset to whatever you want. You're gonna have to experiment. Go to Customize Core, put it on to a layer mask instead of Saber. The Customize Core, the core type, layer mask. And for the render settings so that it's transparent, you're gonna to have to go to a transparent background. So now it brings through. And if you click on this little rectangle, you can toggle the transparency grid and you see that it goes through, right? So now we're just gonna do the same thing on the bottom layer. Um, I'm gonna change the color first. So I'm just gonna make both of them red and I'm gonna actually make both of them the same, the same, uh, the same preset just for video purposes. You can change it up if you want to. I mean, there's no rule to this guys. I just like to, tell you guys how I do get stuff done, but there's no rule to this. So we'll go to customize core again, and we're gonna go on to our layer mask. And now we're gonna see both of them on the layer mask. And then, like I said, put it onto a transparent background. Okay, so now I'm gonna drop my playback to about quarter because you don't need your playback to be too high and it's just gonna be choppy and not playback smooth. So I'm just gonna play it back to see what it looks like right now. All right, so that's looking pretty cool for right now. But we want to get our animation going. We don't want just a stagnant, a stagnant uh, glow. So let's get our animation going. So for the animation, what you're going to want to do is set your end offset to zero at the beginning of each of them. So make sure your keyframe pointer is at zero. See, this is this is the liner right here. Set that at zero, zero seconds. And then for both of them, we're going to put the end offset to zero. Okay. And then you put put a time put a time ma mapping on it so on your end offset put that time mapping right there and we're gonna map this one right here so at about around three seconds you want you usually want your logo to be fully revealed at about three seconds so slide this back up to 100 on both of them and now we're just gonna watch how, how it plays out so now we got them both playing in like that very cool all right so there we go that's your that's your logo reveal but we want to get the real, real logo reveal. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna import I'm gonna import the uh, the actual logo from before because I had I had mapped out a little bit of the classic ATL logo just to just to suffice for some of the pixels that we lost. But in my case, I'm gonna have to resize this. But on most cases on your logos, you can just go ahead and do the method that I'm gonna show you, but I'll be right back once I get these sizes correct because I don't wanna have miscorrect sizes. Okay, so we're back. In most cases, what all you would have to do to get onto your your layer underneath for your logo is if you have an effect on the on a, on a logo, all you have to do is go into your effect controls and delete the saber off of it. So if I deleted the saber off of it, there you would have like your original. It's important to know how you would delete the saber off of the logo. So you would duplicate the logo at first. You could press Control D, then delete the saber on it so that you could just put it underneath the logo and have your original logo there to work off of for your Venetian blinds. From what you started with, but in this case, I'm not gonna do that and I just have the classic logo underneath and it's the right size so we're fine to go. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to the point where this loads in completely, right? So that's loads in completely right there at that keyframe and set two keyframes on the core size. So I'm gonna set a core size right here, set that mask core size, set that one. And then we're going to go back onto this. This is our original logo 
and I'm gonna type in Venetian blinds. So I'm gonna type in the transition of Venetian blinds. I already have a preset, but I'm gonna redo it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Drag that onto there. So um, our transition completion, this is, what, this is what creates the effect. So your transition completion, we went to the point where they are both loaded in at 100%, that's very key. Okay, so we went into the point where they're both loaded at 100%, but your transition completion, at the beginning, it's not gonna be zero. It's going to be on 100 because you want it to disappear, then then reappear as the uh, logo fade, the logo glow fades. So transition completion, put a keyframe right there, and then we're going to put our direction. I usually put it on about 45. It's gonna be up to you guys. You're gonna experiment and just see what you like. So I put that on 45, and I'm just gonna go into like, let's go to, I guess, we don't want to have it go too long. I guess we'll go somewhere around four-ish seconds. So I'm going to go to like four seconds and I'm going to put the transition completion to zero. All right. So now that loads in like that. But the, the way that we're going to have to get this logo completed is the last step. So the last step is once you see this right here where they're loading it and then okay so there's the there's where it's done right so put a we already put our core size on 100 and we put a keyframe there now we're going to go into when it's completely loaded in and drop our core size down to zero and we're going to do that on the second one drop it down to zero so now once you have this we're going to play it back fully loading in loading in and boom and the reason that it has like white outlines on the on mine is because it's kind of just the old logo I had to find because I didn't want to get the C right C word on my on my logo and videos right I don't want to get that C word so we have a less likely chance but now you guys see the full animation like that and yeah man that's pretty much how you guys are gonna get this done. If you guys have any questions, definitely let me know down below if you want me to just reinstate some of the things I said before. You can play around with a lot of different things on this. Like you could have two different colors going and set evolutions. I could I can make a video on that type of thing later on if you guys want me to. So just definitely let me know down below. I forgot to say how you're gonna export this. All right, so once you guys are done and you have it all set, okay, we're gonna have to export it, right? So bring your time to about I usually have mine about six seconds. You can set it to whatever, but you're gonna go to file, export, add to render queue. And this is the very key step. Instead of lossless, you gotta change this to RGB plus alpha, and then you're gonna be good to go. Format's gonna be AVI, and you're, that's how you're gonna get this exported, okay? Make sure it's on RGB plus alpha. With that being said, you're all set to go. Have fun with Saber, do your own stuff. Let's get it.